Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Vanta Finland for today's gold medal match between Team Austria and Team France. I am here playing by play commentary, Brandon Kinnett. We'll be joined shortly by my color commentary, Javari Harris. But first, I have a very special guest with me, quarterback of Team Suomi, Miroslav Cotmoney, I'm assuming. Middle Cotmoney, the quarterback from the bronze middle game champions. Middle, 35 to 21. Yeah. It was close there for a little bit, 14, 21 21 there in the third quarter. But you guys came out on top, and we were just talking a little bit before this. The first camp that Team Finland came together back in the winter, yeah. you came in as the what string quarterback? Yeah, fourth string fourth quarterback. Fourth string quarterback. Didn't play, and then didn't start or get any. Meaningful reps really in the first game uh, against Denmark, and then the second game came in at halftime against Team France. And from what I could see, was just kind of a, an extra spark for Team Finland that the team fed off of, and it translated into the third game in the bronze medal game against your guys' rivals, Team Sweden. So just explain to me a little bit what it means to you to go from being on fourth string on the depth chart to the starter for the bronze medal game and leading your team to it. Victory against Team Sweden. It means a lot, man. It means a lot. So yeah, this this February yeah, we had a first camp, getting ready for the uh, tournament. I was the fourth, fourth quarterback, didn't get many reps on that first camp, but I had a plan set on my mind that at the next camp I might get up the third string quarterback. Because we didn't have that much time, we didn't have that many camps, so the next camp I would have had a plan I would be the third string quarterback. Then the camp before these tournaments, I, I told the coach actually that I will be the first quarterback, starting quarterback at some point. My plan was I'll be the starting quarterback before the first game, but that didn't happen, but the next game it happened, and it feels great. This is my home city, I'm, I live right next to the stadium, I'm from here, so it feels great. And maybe now make the coach wish a little bit that maybe he would have started you for for at least the France game. But anyways, a great victory today, obviously, Kari Bayerain and, and the, the run game, very dominant, mm -hmm. but whenever I was watching the game, the thing that impressed me the most was a lot of the times whenever you bring in your backup in quotation marks quarterback and start them for their first game, coaches are going to be really conservative with them. They're not going to call many plays downfield. They're going to try to call just a bunch of short passes. But for you, he was calling passes. You're throwing seams. You're taking shots on post. You were, it seemed like the playbook opened up even a little bit more. And that you were able to play so confident and so calm, where even when a play broke down, you were so smart. Where I've seen them watching some of these other games, quarterbacks, anytime they're under pressure or a play breaks down, they just throw it up and it's a pick next thing you know. You played one of the cleanest games I've seen this tournament. So, what was kind of like the thing that helped you stay so calm in your first start in the bronze medal game? Well, the whole line, whole line we had was great. I had, I had so much confidence with the whole line that I had good protection. So, I. Uh, I had a clean pocket for the most of the time. A couple times that was, that was my mistake. I didn't, I didn't call the right protection with that. So my mental uh, mentality before the game was like, I don't, I don't want to make any stupid mistakes. I want to play clean game. And if nothing is open, I throw it away or just try to run myself. But nothing, nothing stupid. And wanted to take what the defense gives us. You did a great job of that. Thank now, you. before I let you go, Austria, France. Obviously, you only played Team France and lost in last second fashion. Mm -hmm. Who do you have in this matchup? Mm -hmm. The both teams, they they have a team that they win can win this tournament, but I would say Team Austria. I think as a unit, they are a notch better, in my opinion. So Team Austria, yes. coming from the bronze medal champion, Miro Kaveri. Thanks for joining with us, Matt. Thank Mino. you, Brandon. Enjoy the game. Thank you, Spatrick. <laughs> Joined back again with Jabari Harris for the kickoff on this one. Jabari, Austria, I think we were talking a little bit earlier in the day. Austria, between us, we thought that they kind of had maybe a slightly easier road to this gold medal game. France, a little bit more difficult. Austria, two days ago, had to play Sweden in kind of the semifinals and handled them without any issues. France, on the other hand, two days ago, played against Finland in what was a very physically demanding game. So do you think that's kind of an issue where Austria maybe is 
a little bit fresher than France because they really haven't played in a game where they haven't just be worn out mentally and physically to the end? I, I, I think in a, in a way, yes, I agree. I think that uh, they've probably been able to reserve some of their key players a little bit more. Um, they've, of course, they have a lot of guys here. They have a lot of depth, so they've been able to rotate those guys early because games have gotten out of touch. But I think that the motivation of Team France is not going to allow them to let up. I think they're going to come out and give it their all, pain or not. And on the opening kickoff, it is number 42, Blatsko, and he's one of the guys you're going to want to pay attention to, especially in this matchup. In the semifinal game against Sweden, had two rushing touchdowns and a kickoff return. So he's one of the guys where anywhere you get him the ball in the game, he has a chance to take it to the house at any point. Another guy for offense on Austria you got to pay attention to is the big receiver, number seven, Soikovic. Two meters tall and more agile than you would think for someone at that size. I mean, going back to 2014, Oscar won the silver medal in the European Championship and France the bronze. In that tournament, they were in the same group of team Austria defeated France 28 to 9. So you have to think that after a good World Game tournament where Team France won it, you have to think that they really prepared for this one and they looking for revenge here today. And on the first play of offense for Austria, it's Anton Wegen on the carry. Gets a good gain of nine. And this is one of the things that I think that France might struggle with a little bit is the size and physicality of Austria's offensive line. Dory on the handoff inside, cuts up the middle, Wagon again, and good enough for a first down up to the 39-yard line. And again, yeah, you're definitely right, Brandon. This this Austrian offensive line, they're big, they're strong, and they're in shape. And not to mention, they have some great running backs that's back there running the ball. Uh, starting this game, we see number five there, Anton Wiegand, and I was expecting to see number 42, Sandro, in there. So... See, I think, I think what Austria is doing, you can see him at the bottom of your screen behind in the stack bunch, is they're widening him out. And France has to respect his speed and quickness out there, which lightens the box for Anton Wigan to get, like we're seeing right now, five yards a pop. And also France is having to respect it, and they're playing with five in the box. So it looks like they're going to have to make a choice because that offensive line for Team Monster is strong enough to handle that five-man front, and they can run all over them if they don't make some adjustments. And for me, I think it's really comical. You see on the bottom of the screen in the two wide receivers, one of them is the super speedy and shifty Platskuma, and the other one, the elite tall mountain Soikovic. So they have two of their best and most dangerous players on the same side of the field. So France obviously has to respect that. As we see the ball once again out in the flats to Wigan on the swing, and that'll be close to a first down depending on the spot as he tiptoes out of bounds. And I think that's a great coaching adjustment for Team Monster because they know in this game that France has very great athletes, and they want to put their best athletes on the field as well. So they've been able to reserve these guys with all these good running backs that they can afford to do that. And what I love about that play call, you put your two best players on offense on one side of the field, force France to kind of shift their best players that side, and then throw it to the opposite side of the field, away from France's best players. And the guy on, for France on defense that I'm looking out for the most is number 24, Sebastian Sejan. He is one of those guys who has been making plays all tournament long, and Austria is going to try to stay away from him as much as possible, as we have a pass incomplete there from Alexander Tori, intended for Platzkuma. And on that deflection, you're going to see number 30 there, Soyeme Carmoko. And he's definitely been playing some good football. And that looks like it's going to be a three and out for Team Monster as we're here at fourth and one. But it looks like they're going to go for it. No, it's so good. So Soikovic is their punter, so that's the reason why he's still in the huddle. Man, they got so, so many guys that can do so many things. Number one. Amir Kelani back to return for France. Nice high-hanging punt. Wow, that was a great punt right there. And that's there. barely going to go back into the end zone. But still, a great punt, not giving France a chance to return it. And France will start off at the 20-yard line. So on that first drive, what do you think, Brandon? It seemed that Team Monster was going to be able to move the ball and pound it downfield, but France defense held up to a good third down stop and now their offense is going to get a chance to move the ball. I kind of question the call on third and one. On third and one, the way you were running early in the drives against France, I don't know why you put the ball in the air. 
give the ball to your running back, your offensive line is going to get you one yard. So I think right there, especially early in the game, you want to get as much momentum and rhythm as you can. Make it easier on yourself. Don't be cute, too cute too early. Save that for the second and third quarter. Absolutely. We're going to have the first and ten here. Inside handoff to Steven Yetmo, and he was one of the guys against Finland, where Finland was really tough against the run, but this guy is a hard runner. And although the first, second, and kind of third quarters, Finland kind of held him in check, but he keeps on going even into the fourth quarter, and eventually the Finnish defense wore down just enough for him to squeeze in for a touchdown. And we talked a lot about Austria's offensive line being big and athletic, but look at this offensive line for Team France as well. I think that they definitely fare well versus this defensive line in the trenches. And the other guy on the French offense that you want to look out for is the big athletic receiver, number 81, and that is Jefferson Alexandre. He was the guy that kind of won the game for France against Finland in the semifinals, making a lot of big-time plays, especially near the near the goal line. And that's one thing that you won't see very often. Paul Durant, not really a runner. I don't know if that was a miscommunication, but he's not the guy that you're going to see running the ball a little lot, more of the, pocket, the, the stereotypical pocket passer. I mean, you know, it's the championship, so you never know. Pull all the bad tricks out of the bag, huh? <laughs> so the first third down for Team France is a third and two. One running back double tight end set, and they're going to hand it off to Yepmo, trying to go up the middle, and he is stopped for a loss on the play. The Austrian defense stands strong, bringing up fourth down, and the punt unit will come on for France. And again, they want to get the ball inside, but look at the strength and the, the power of that Austrian defensive line. As you said before, fresh, prepared, well coached, and ready for this game. Exactly. So now we'll see if Austria can flip the field position a little bit and get a nice return out of Blatzko. We're able to return this one. Tackled immediately by a swarm of French players. Tackled just shy of the 40-yard line where Austria will take over for their second drive. And you know, Brandon, I think that that's going to be one of the keys in this game. As both teams have been having success on special teams, I think that that's going to play a very important element in this game. Not allowing guys on special teams to make big plays as well. Definitely. And this is a different formation. We got a two-by-two. Two. A lot of times you see Austria with two running backs in the game. This time, spreading off. France out a little bit with a five-man box, handed off inside, waking up the middle, good for three before he's taken down by number 24, the guy we talked about a little bit earlier, Sebastian Sajan. Looks like they wanted to try to run that counter, but France's defense, they, they have some very athletic guys in that box. They read pretty well, they're well coached and disciplined. So, again, it's going to come down to who wants it the most in the trenches. That offensive line is not small and they work together well. So good job by France by not allowing that to be an even bigger game. And I'm still waiting for Fran for Austria to take a shot to the big swing of this. They took a shot early in their game against Sweden and it paid off for a touchdown on a fade route. But any, no matter what cornerback you put out there on him, it's a size mismatch. So at some point, I expect them to go after him deep. Third down and eight after the short run from Wigan. And it looks like they're really trying to establish the run game, which is very important. We've seen that throughout this tournament a lot. The team that can run the ball and control the clock usually comes out victorious in these games. It doesn't look like France is going to give Austria the chance to a one-on-one -on -one shot to Soikovitz with the safety playing over top and double coverage. He's going to go He's there. Gonna anyway. go anyway. And you oh. incomplete. Nearly caught a great throw, actually, by the quarterback, Alexander Thurry, in the cover two hole on the fade. But unfortunately, Soikovitz not able to haul it in, and he's going to go back to punt it away once again. And as you said, that was perfect ball placement. Quarterback steps up, puts it in the hole, and that was a good back shoulder ball that just... The defense, the defender was in perfect position to just get a hand in there and pop it out. Exactly. Good coverage there by number 30, Suleiman Karamako. And you're going to have to hang with me and Jabari here on some of the last name pronunciations. <laughs> We're from the States. Usually the last names are a little bit easier to pronounce, a.k.a. Jabari Harris. Not too <laughs> difficult, but some of these French and Austrian last names... Uh, yeah, we're going to struggle a little bit, but we'll try our best as the punt 
Looks like it goes out of bounds right at the 30-yard line where France will take over for their second drive. And so far, it's been exactly kind of what we thought it would be, a defensive battle, and especially in the trenches. Both defensive lines have been standing strong so far. What I would like to see here, I would like to see Team France continue to try to run the ball and match up in the trenches, but I'm, I'm waiting to see when Alexander Thurry is going to, oh, whoop, looks like we got a new face in there at quarterback. It's going to be the draw. Yeah, and in the quarterback now for France is number five, Amedic Defalot. And it looks like it was just a special wildcat package. Maybe he's more of the running quarterback. And now they're going to bring back in the usual starter, Paul Durant. So just a little gadget play, try to catch Austria a little ill-prepared. The, the first, we haven't seen that in the previous games. So just a little wrinkle that all France pulled out for the gold medal game. Good for a gain of four, a bring up second and six. Yep, no, in the I formation behind Durant. Snap, and it's going to be a delayed handoff up the middle, and that is tackled immediately. That was a great tackle in the back, but looks like that number was number 83. Eight. Nicholas Melcher on the play to stop him for a loss of one will bring up third and seven for France now. So now I'm wondering if I'm going to see Paul Duran drop back and give us some of that good, precise passing that he's been doing throughout the tournament. Again, not flashy, anything fancy downfield, but safe and accurate balls to wide open receivers. And you see the match up here at the top. I think that's Jefferson, and that's going to be number 20 on the coverage. Up the middle, complete to number 44, Simon Riedel on the big play on third down to move the chains for Team France. And he's been big. He's been a silent factor in this tournament from that tight end position. Can't, can't forget how many big plays he had versus Team Finland. Third and longs. This exact situation. You forget about the tight end when his hand is in the dirt. And that time he made a big grab. And usually they try to sneak him out of the tight end position on some sort of play action pass. That one was just a straight drop back and a nice throw from Durant. This time the Yepmo. Bounce able to break it outside, breaks another oh, tackle. He's going to get some room. And out of bounds, finally, inside the 30, close to the 22-yard line is Yepmo. And that guy runs extremely hard. Like, an arm tackle is not taking him down. You can see he comes back here. Defender just reaches in the arm. He's not going down like that. Break two tackles on that one, and you're really going to have to man up. You're going to have to get him and take the legs out because you're not going to tackle him up high. And good blocking outside, downfield by the receiver, out, uh, Jefferson and Alexandre, too, allowing this running back to get out downfield. They're going to say he walked out of bounds at around the 29-yard line. First and 10 for France. And this time it's an inside shovel pass, but that's dropped. And that's not a fumble, that's an incomplete pass. It's a forward shuffle, so that'll be an incomplete pass. Not a turnover, so it'll be bring up second and ten. A well-designed play. If he could have caught it, he might have been able to get a few yards. Absolutely. I think that it was a well-designed play and well-timed, but hey, incomplete pass there. And for a lot of people that don't know that rule, you just learned something new today from Mr. Connect. So France already shown two new wrinkles to their offense that we hadn't seen in previous games with the the inside option and then also with the QB done. And there's a fumble by Yemmo, picked up by Paul Duran, looking to make something out of it. Finally going to be brought down for a loss on the play. And I think that's the first fumble he's had in this series. And you can hardly put the heat. Was in, he was barely even able to get his hand on the ball before big number 97. Berard Moser was back there to meet him. Finally, Paul Durant after, Paul Durant, excuse me, after picking up the ball was taken down by number 24, Fabian Sieber, for the loss of five, which will bring up a big third and 15. And for France, they're good at passing, but third and very longs is where I saw them struggle. Usually if they can keep it in the third and seven range, that's when Paul Durant feels more at home and more comfortable. And it looks like they're going to go to play action. Going to get the double move there. And that's going to be a touchdown. Team France in the first points of the game. And that's going to be a touchdown for number 13, Andrew James. See, I'm going to need to see the instant replay to see where the safeties were. Because it was a play action. And I want to see if the safeties bit up 
on the play. Because if you're a safety, why are you biting up on? And he did. You can see him stutter up on the play action on third and 15. You should never bite on any kind of play action on third and 15. And it looks like they bought the heat. And it looks like it was a form of, of man coverage. Safety was supposed to be covering the slot all the way. Came up, fell for the play action, stopped his feet, and that was too easy, Brandon. And a, a, a perfect throw for Paul Durant. And a, just you can't say anything better about that throw and the confidence he had to take that kind of shot on third and 15. And I think it's a, it's a great play call by the coach of trusting him in that situation and saying, hey, we have to do it. We're going to do it, and you have to make the play. Exactly. Alexandre lining up for the extra point now, trying to make it 7 nothing for France. And he will do so right down the middle. So with 2 minutes, 42 seconds left in the first quarter after what started as a defensive slugfest, France comes out with a few explosive runs from Yetmont and then Paul Durand on the deep post route for the touchdown to put France ahead early. And here again, you can see the safety at the top. You can see him stutter and take, and take just a small step forward. But that loss of momentum is what helps the receiver get behind him on the post route. And now I'm trying to figure out where was the backside safety, seeing that there was no deep threat from the opposite side. Just mis miscommunication all around. You should never, on 3rd and 15, never let anyone get, uh, on any play really, never get anyone deeper than you. But on 3rd and 15 especially, I mean, you should already be back there. I don't know, just poor safety play for Team Austria on that one, on both sets of safeties. And I'm quite sure the coach is probably in his ear saying the same thing as Team France goes up 7-0. Score is a bit wrong there saying Austria 7-0. But I'm sure they'll get that fixed. And the kick is off. Caught at the 15-yard line, a relatively short kick. And you talked about it a little bit earlier. The special teams are going to play a big role. And that is big for Team France. Team Austria had their way with special teams against Team Sweden. But so far, France looks like they're well coached and have a great game plan to stop Lutz Moomer before he can get his leg rough moving. And if you notice what they did there, they didn't really try to kick it deep, but they sky kicked it, allowed those athletic gunners to get down there to make a play, and they did. Not allow him to get any room to make some of those big plays he made earlier in this tournament. So Austria looking to answer back after the French touchdown. Two back set, slot to the left for Tori. And he's going to hand it off to Wigan. Wigan can't find room, and he's going to be tackled right at the 20 yard line. Right past the 20 yard line at the 21. It looks like a gain of only one. And this defense is doing a good job not allowing them to have big running lanes. That defensive line is just physical. And that was a great play by number 45, Giovanni Nangai. He didn't make the tackle, but what he did is he set the edge, caused some disruption in the backfield, and forced the running back to cut back inside to where the rest of his defenders were. A great play by him, and that's something that won't show up on the stat sheet, but he's the guy that really made the play on that, on that down for Team France. And uh -oh. this time we're going to have a... Penalty on Team France will move them up five yards. And haven't we seen this all tournament? These guys get antsy down there. It's big time football, and guys want to make the play every play. Still have to be disciplined. Yeah. Earlier in the day, with the uh, Great Britain Denmark game, we saw some really sloppy football. It seemed like there was almost a penalty every single play. The Team Finland Swedish game cleaner. I'm curious to see what this one is. A lot of these teams playing three games in one week can be kind of overwhelming, not only physically, but also mentally. So you really have to be extra focused for this. And plus the added hype of this being the gold medal game, you have to be extremely locked in and disciplined. And I think this is where you see football's, football players play at their best is when it's in these type of situations where everything is on the line and you have to continue to focus. Exactly. On the second down and five, Austria runs up the middle close to a first down, but it'll be third and about two. And this is the point where last time I, I, they went for the pass and I thought that they maybe should have ran it. 
I'm kind of looking for Austria to trust their offensive line here, their big boys, and just run it behind them. Let them push the defense forward for a yard or two, and then let the running back do the rest. I agree with you, Brandon. I mean, the last time they were in this situation, I think they tried to pass it. So let's see if they take your advice. They're going to motion out. And they do go up the middle, and that'll be good enough for a first down and a little bit more all the way up to the 34-yard line. And a first down for Team Austria. And I like that. I like them. You can see whenever they motioned that guy, it brought that other linebacker, number 43, outside of the box, creating a lighter box. And then because it was an inside zone read, they left the defensive end on the weak side unblocked. So they've really got five offensive linemen, and they only have to block four guys. So they can get great movement on that double team and not have to worry about even coming off to anybody at all. Absolutely. It's a great play call. And you have to you have to know that they're gonna always be worried about where number 42 is because he's a big time playmaker. Exactly. And it's no secret. Uh, first and ten, the pass is complete to Soikovitz on the curl route. A dark delivery from Alexander Thory, and I knew that they would get him involved early. And there's his first catch of the day. The big two meter mountain Soikovitz from the Vienna Vikings in Austria. And I mean you have to because he's without a doubt the best receiver on the field for Team Austria right now. And I don't think anybody physically can match up with him on the defensive side for any team. And earlier in the year we played against them. The Helsinki Roosters went and played the Vienna Vikings and let me tell you for how big he is, he is much faster than you would think. We saw we were playing against him and he took a hitch, broke a tackle from our corner and took it the rest of the way. I think it was close to 70 yards for a touchdown. So I know that Plot Skuma is kind of the guy we talked about who's the speedster that you have to be aware of every play. But this guy, don't don't sleep on him either because not only can he beat you with his size, but he's, he's pretty fast for a big guy. And that looks like that's going to do it here for the first quarter as Team France leads in the first quarter of the championship game, 7-0. And the one thing I did see, France is doing a great job is you saw in the first drive, Austria had huge running lanes. The last two drives, you haven't seen those ginormous running lanes. They're small lanes, and they're able to still get three, four, five yards here and there. But the first drive, they were huge. So France talked something, talked about something on the sideline after that first drive, and have really tightened down on the defensive front and linebacker court. Split back formation. Running back on either side of Dory. Soikovitz up at the top of your screen. First down and 10 at the 46 yard line. Wigan on motion. They're going to hand it off inside and he creases up the middle. And that is the elusive man, Blatzkuma, ahead all the way up into France territory up to the 48 yard line. And that's a good run there by him, and that's what we expect. When he gets room to hit the hole, he's again another north and south back, but in open field, he does have the speed to get out of there. And that's one thing you have to be aware of if you're France. You're fine if he gets those five-yard runs. The thing you can't let him do is get past your linebackers. If he gets past the linebackers and has room to make a move on a safety, it might be adios for him. Second down and four. Spread formation, and that's going to be a false start on Austria. We'll back them up five, and a second and nine coming up. And here we go. Penalties here. And, you know, these things are always costly, so... Not as many as we seen early in the game versus the Denmark and Great Britain game. Like that one was rain and yellow flags, but gonna be second down here. And this one's gonna be a offsides on the defense. Pass intended for number four, Adrian Platzkumer, knocked away. And yes, Platzkumer. There are brothers on this team. Adrian Blatzkumer, the older of the two, number four, and then 42, Sandro Blatzkumer, the younger one, number 42. I mean, what a treat to be playing in a game like this with your own brother. I mean, Brandon, you probably know how that feels to be able to wing it out to your younger brother, I believe. And I'm telling you, man, has to be fun. 
to be out there with family and having some good time playing football. It's a lot of fun in the Blatzkuma brothers just a couple weeks ago what took home the Austrian Football League title, taking down the Vienna Vikings on a last second field goal. As we see the younger brother Sandro ahead for a first down on the inside dive. And you can see he's a small, tiny guy, but on that run, you can see the window that the, the, the lane, the running lane that the offensive line provided for him wasn't that wide. But he's so tiny, all he did was shift his shoulders sideways just for a half second, squeaks through, and then his quickness, his little burst after that, to get him five more yards down to the 41 yard line of Team France. We're starting to see the emergence of good running backs in European football. I'll tell you, I've seen some. Some very young. I mean, this is another guy, 21 years old, and he's running the ball hard. There he, goes. There he goes. I told you, don't let him get past the linebackers because the safeties cannot stop this guy. Sandro Platzkuma, touchdown Austria. Rumble, young man, rumble. And he made that look easy, didn't he, Brandon? Well, the offensive line made it look easy. <laughs> when do we watch? When do we get to the replay? Watch the lane, the cutback lane that the offensive. It's five yards wide. But he's got the speed that once he gets through that, if he gets past the linebackers, he's not going to be tackled. Because a safety, I don't care what safety it is, one-on-one -on -one in the open field, he's too quick, he's too shifty, and his finishing speed is unmatched in this tournament. And that's going to notch it up right there. Is this going to be 7-7 seven to seven here early in the second quarter? And that's what we talked about. When you can run the ball like that, Everything in your offense is going to eventually open up. I mean, they started off big completion to the big man, number seven. Next thing you know, about a 40, 35, 40 yard run right up the gut to Sandro Plasco. Untouched. Untouched. And what that's going to do is it's going to make the safeties for France bite down even harder. And so far in this game, we've seen them double cover Soikovic with a corner up top, or a corner down low, and then a safety playing over the top, trying to take away that big man threat. But eventually, this box is so light for Team Austria, they're just going to keep running it until France takes that safety away, rolls him down into the box to, run with the, to help with the run game. And as soon as he does that, I guarantee you they will throw the fade to Soikovic in any one-on-one -on -one matchup. I don't care who's... Who is covering him? And in a game like this, when you're playing a team that's so balanced, it forces the defense to play honest. And that's what I love about both of these teams. They're both so balanced. They both, not, not necessarily air raid offenses who are just going to kill you passing, but when they need to, they are very capable quarterbacks who don't make a lot of mistakes. So this is going to be returned by number 28 there for Team France. It's going to be Jason Aguiman, running back, and another good player from the flash there. So it looks like he couldn't, couldn't quite get the grip, but he's still going to get it a little bit past the 20, probably on the 21-yard line to begin this drive. And really good kick coverage by Austria. And so far, both of these special teams units for both teams have been really stout, not allowing the big plays to happen on special teams, making the offenses earn it against really stout defenses. Here we go, first and ten. Tries to bounce it outside to the left, but swarmed down by number 22, Matthias Revel. Four gain of only one on the play. And you see there, Austria's D-line slanted hard, and they bought the linebackers in, causing some problems up front as the running lanes are not that clear. And what I wanted to see a little bit more there, you can see the French lineman, number 78, Ahmad Montagini. He was kind of tiptoeing as he was pulling. You want your big guy just as soon as he gets around, go downhill and just create a hole. It looked like the lineman was looking for a hole. That's not his job. His job is to create it. He's got to be more aggressive. They're going to go play action, and he's going to keep it safe and check it down, but a little bit too high for the big man. And Looks like it's going to bring up a third down. Third down and nine coming up. Duran just a little bit off on that throw. Nice clean pocket by the French O-line, just barely outside the reach. And I really like how they're working together and how they're communicating and giving this quarterback time. That's been one of the things that have allowed them late in the game to have some success is that play-action pass. It was one of the things that Team Finland really never was able to stop. Yeah, exactly. So a big third down and nine back at the 21-yard line for Team France. 
They come out in slot right formation, tight end to the right as well. Duran back to pass, moves around in the pockets, flips it out to Yetmo in the flats, makes a move, but going to be stopped short of the first down marker, stopped at about the 28-yard line, and the French putt punt unit will come onto the field. And again, that's good defense, forcing the quarterback to check it down and just trusting that your skill guys can pursue and rally around to make the play. And I love the big defense alignment, 97, Murad Moser. He's the one flying seven yards downfield after a throw pass play, making the tackle. That's effort you want to see on a down to down basis from your defensive line. So Team France is going to be punting again. It's going to be a high one. This time, fair caught by Platzkumo right about the 29-yard line, where Team Austria will take over for their second possession of this second quarter. The last one resulting on a 42-yard rushing touchdown from that man you saw right there, Sandro Platzkumo. And I really do expect to see more of the same. I expect to see Austria pound the ball, pound the ball, pound the ball, force France to load up the box. And until they do, just keep running. And once they do... <laughs> the Throw it to Soikovitz. It's never a bad idea. That's Soikovitz up at the top of your screen. Two by two formation. Glory back to pass. Rolls to the right, delivers a strike, and that one is complete to Soikovitz, his second reception on the on the day. And did you see how he used that big frame to get down there, shoot himself, and get underneath that ball? Like that's a great catch right there. And for this big guy, there's a couple routes that I really would like to to see the, the Austria throw to him. Number one's the fade. Let him go up and get a basketball re rebound. Number two, a curl route. As soon as he turns his back to a defender, he's so big, it's hard for the defender to get around him, and he can reach his arms out and make an easy catch without the DB being able to knock the ball away. And also maybe like a comeback route. Just allow him to use his size to his advantage. It looks like he's going to be stopped there at the line. Wasn't really brought down, kept moving his legs, but referees are going to blow it down. Good tackle there by number 92, Abdel Alpo to stop him before he could get any momentum going. But it looks like it's still going to be good enough for a first down here. Dory under center. Wing back to the left. Going to hand it off up the middle. And Wigan falls forward for about three. And there's going to be a penalty on the play. Feeling it might be holding on number 70. Just a guess. I'm gonna wait to see what the call on the field is. I actually saw. Oh no! You know what's gonna be? It's gonna be illegal hands to the face. And I think we saw this exact call on the exact player from France in the Fil in the Finland game two days ago. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what it is. And again, these penalties are gonna be costly. I mean, it's free yards in a big game. You just have to be smart. And you have to be controlled. And that's just undisciplined. As a defensive lineman, you should never have your hands up around someone's face. That's but just an unnecessary penalty to take. But you know, you get these New Donna Gasu type of D linemen that people love. They just <laughs> play the game so nasty. And they're going to get some of those every game. But you like when they're not getting them. Yeah. So a light box, once again, only five men in the box. Tony back to pass to his big target, Soikovic, and that's an easy catch and completion. And you can see, even though that's a good, another great thing about having such a big guy, he overthrows him by about two yards high. But when you're two meters and you reach your arms up to go get it, it makes it look easy. His arms, his arm reach gets him up to three meters. <laughs> Crazy size. So they bring up second down and three for Austria, the two by two formation. And I like this formation from Austria. Spread France out and then run it down their throat. Uh, Looks I like might take a to roll to a one high look, bring a six back. And would you look at Dorian that? Dorian keeps it. And going to be stopped for gain on the play. Now what I would want to see is, because they're going to double swing if it's a lot, anytime they give you true cover one and press him, throw it deep to the big guy. Throw it deep to the big guy early and often. That time, Thori on the run play thought he had a little bit of room to run. Unfortunately, not able to get past the French defender. And that's going to be number 92, Abdel Ajo on the tackle. Going to bring up a third down and three. 
Austria lining up in the wide bunch formation. Doherty back to pass. And that was intended for the older brother, Adrian Platzkuma. Knocked away nicely by number 30, Suleiman Karamako. And he's already had his name called in this game for two PB, two PBUs. And he's really on top of his game here today as he knows that he has a great challenge ahead of him. And he's not backing down from it. And it looks like Team Oshir is keeping the offense on the field and going for it on this fourth and three. Do you think this is where you'll get to see that, that toss up to the big man here? I don't know about on fourth and three. On fourth and three, the way your offense has been running the ball, I might work on a run play. And that's going to be a toss. And, and that's going to be a penalty. That's an illegal motion, I believe. The receiver number 82 never looked like he was set. It may have been a good thing because it looks like that play was going to be broken up. Yeah, so it's going to lead to, after the penalty, it's going to bring up fourth and seven, and you're right. France looked like they were swarming all around that one, so maybe the punt is the better, the lucky option on this one. So that's going to bring them to fourth and eight. And I look for him to angle punt it on this one, try to get it out of bounds somewhere close to the goal line. Anything inside the 20 is just extra yardage. So he commits, and that's exactly what he's doing. Angles it right there. And that's just an unfortunate bounce. It bounced, you can see the first bounce bounced close to the sideline, but the ball took a kick inside. Just sometimes because of the shape of the football, it just takes those bounces. And that was still good coverage there. It looks like number 29 for Team Mostria running down there on that play. That's going to be Andreas Loonzer on the coverage. Good effort. So here we go, 7-7, seven to seven, and we're almost at the end point of the first half with 5.38. And Team France is coming back out on the field. And this is definitely a defensive game here today. Yeah. An absolute slugfest to start this one early. Yep, ball on the counter, and that's going to go for only one. Number three in on the tackle, Florian Prost. So, yep, well, again, so far in this game, taking all of the carries, the workhorse, and the coach trusts them. He's in there, and they have other backs that have shown that they can be good, but I feel like this guy just said, I want it. And it's definitely a difference in the first game whenever they played Denmark. They were two backs rotating almost every single series and even during series. And then in the semifinals against Finland, we saw it was just Yetmo and, so, yet and so far in this one, it's been only Yetmo again as Duran drops back to pass, going to have pressure, steps up, Yetmo's leading, and that's going to be an easy first down and hurdle as Duran picks up a first down and lets Team Austria know on the sideline, and the ref is going to see it. And yet again, an unforced penalty for Team France. That's just, and they're going to call taunting every single time. You, It's one thing to point, but it's another thing to get up, walk onto their sideline, stare them down, and then point. You just, you can't do that. And that's a <laughs> stupid penalty to take after what was a great play. And that's what you get in these games. When guys are just very eager to go out there and make plays. But you have to be careful. Someone's got to tell the big guy Duran. We saw him make the play, a great play. We don't need some of that extra gloating afterwards. Get back to the huddle. You still got, even after that play, you still needed 70 more yards before you got to the end zone. Wait to celebrate until you score. So what seemed to be a first down for about a 15-yard gain is going to be a first down back at the same spot that he just started. At least to reset the sticks, I guess. <laughs> so Duran under center. Two back set, full back offset to the right. And he's going to drop back to pass. Clean pocket, finds his guy. And that's going to be a fumble. And Team Austria has it. Number 44, Kevin Wamba on the reception. And some kind of just fighting for a little bit too much extra yardage. We talked about it earlier with Miko Seppinen against Team Sweden. Sometimes you just got to know when to go down. Absolutely. He already made a great catch, secured the first. Big guy trying to run 
him before a little bit more. You'll see here, Paul Grant sees wide open in the middle of the field, has the ball, and it just comes out at the end of the play, and that's going to be very costly. And again, just think about it. You got a big momentum shift on the QB scramble. You take a, a, a penalty, and then a fumble follows. And that was number 24, Fabian Sieber, on the recovery, giving Austria field position inside France territory down at the 36 where Alexander Thorey and company will start work. Two high safety look from France on first down. And I love this formation. Soinkovitz up at the top of the screen, the only receiver to the, to the boundary. Then you have Wiegand to the left of Thorey and Plotzkuller to the right of him. And if they put Plotzkuller in motion to the left, that's going to force some sort of rotation to the field, and we've seen Austria do that a lot. And then you've still got Soikovic at the top, you've got Plotzkuller in the flats, and then you still have a very talented running back, Wiegand, in for you. This time, a new play action. action. And wow, do you look at how wide open that was. Hey, a great play set up. Put Soikovic as a decoy, run the safety and corner off, Fake a handoff, and then what you're not really thinking about is that fullback position on the wheel route. And if that's a little bit of a better throw than Les Blotzkumer catching that's got to be a touchdown. Nobody's catching it. It's an easy touchdown. Still a good play, but if Tony is just a little bit more accurate, that is a huge play for Team Austria. Still down close to the 25-yard line just inside. Same formation. I, I'd say in this formation the whole game. I love this. Split back there. We have Blotzkumer to the field. Handed off inside the weekend. Breaks it outside to the right. It's going to have a crease. Down good for a nine-yard gain, and that's why I love it. Get the linebackers moving the opposite direction, then run it back the opposite way, and you have big old Soikovitz out there blocking too. With with that many playmakers on offense, they should they should be able to run these types of not really gadget plays but misdirection plays and have a lot of success the whole day. And I'm 100 percent sure that the closer they get to this territory, that number seven is going to get an opportunity to get one of those I wanna jump see balls. It. I want to see a fade. Just if there's not a safety over top. Oh, it looks like the safety's rolling. Oh, and we might give him a here. chance. Here it comes. Uh oh. Swing past the weekend, lowers his shoulder, but a nice tackle there made by number 21. And the offensive coordinator, the offensive coordinator is a genius here because he knows that two guys are going with Platt Schumer every play. And it's opening up everyone around him. That time, a linebacker in the corner followed him in, and the running back's wide open in the flat. It's a great job of using your best players as decoys. You Obviously, you want to get your the ball into the hands of your best players as much as possible, but sometimes, use them as decoys. And it's also a good way of getting your best players rest, because as your best players are doing those little motions, they're not expending that much energy, and you're giving the ball to other players, so you're, you're resting your best players in a way, but at the same time, you're opening up lanes for your other guys. And it's not like the difference between Blatskuma and Wigan is that big. Wigan is still a very talented back who can also make you pay. Absolutely. And I like how these guys are feeding off each other. When you have that much talent and a solid offensive line, the sky's the limit as a play caller to what you can do. And sometimes as an offensive coordinator, you just got to kind of feel with that many different players on the field, you can almost call anything, and it should work just because there's so many options. And I like to say play calling. Again, Thur is not being asked to do a lot. He's making safe, sure throws, and that's what we've talked about. These coaches have to make the quarterback's job easy by allowing him to just make safe throws and put the ball in the playmaker's hands. Exactly. So first down and 10, close to the 10-yard line. Dory back to pass, and there it is. And that's a touchdown. it. And it's just a mismatch. I don't care who you put a corner. It's all you have to do is throw a high, and this guy is going up to get it. And I mean, that's a perfectly placed ball. I mean, it's high to the outside where only he can get it, and he's going to get it. I mean, it's nothing the corner can do. You can even see the corner was watching it the whole time, but there's nothing you can do. There's nothing. 
It's ridiculous. And I mean, we knew it was coming. That eventually. was the perfect situation eventually. for Eventually. You have to know it's coming eventually. It's just, uh, it's just when. And Austria takes advantage of the mountain. And the score now, 14 to 7, Austria after a great drive. And the players played well on that drive for Austria, but the play calling? Love the play calling so far Absolutely. on that drive by You just look at this high to the outside, clearly gets the foot down, and watch the big man celebrate. And they're going to put it right through the uprights here to go up by seven points. And still, that comes back to the personal foul penalty on Duran. Backs them up 15. Then they throw a little pass over the middle. Fumble. And Austria makes him pay. Turnovers have been the number one decider in this tournament vote so far over who wins and who loses games. We watched the Finland game earlier today. Finland turned the ball only once and it was a fumble. No interceptions by the quarterback. Went on to win the game. Denmark earlier today turned the ball over seven times. Lost the game. And that game wasn't even like it was a huge blowout. Like, Denmark was in the game for a majority of the game despite those turnovers. So you just have to think if they didn't turn the ball over, what could have been for them? So far, France, the team turning the ball over, and Austria capitalizing it on it, on it early. Absolutely. And the returner here is going to be number 13. Had a touchdown earlier to begin the game. It's going to be Andrew James, wide receiver. Dolphins, nice. It's a nice name for a team. The East Dolphins. Out to about the 20, we'll call it the 23 yard line where France will take over and look to answer. And I'm still waiting for the, the big playtime receiver, Jefferson Alexander, to get involved. So far, I haven't really seen much of him. But when they throw the ball, he's the guy they're going to. And here we have an empty formation. They did this against Finland and like to draw a little drag route and try to get somebody on a mismatch with a linebacker. We'll see what they do here. And there it is, the drag route. But this time, Austria is ready for it. Number three, Florian Probst. Obviously watch film. Because that's what France wants to do whenever they're in the, in the five-wide formation. Run the first guy off. They come underneath with the second slot receiver. At that time, Probst was just ready for it and waiting. Absolutely, but we have a flag down here on the play. Let's see what they're going to call. Don't think that was any type of pass interference. I wouldn't think so. And pass interference. Defense number wow. three. Ball is booked. Ball is booked. Put the foul. Automatic first down. We need to see the instant replay. I thought it was a clean play. Absolutely. I mean, the receiver got a hand on the ball, and he met him at the point of attack. But who are we? We're just the, we're not, we're just the commentators and the play-by-play. -play. A couple of old heads looking at Finland. That's about it. <laughs> so after the penalty, it will still be first to ten. Ball in the 26. France shifting the formation to a bunch to the left. Durand under center. Drops back to pass. Looking left. Steps up in the pocket, and he's going to take off the scramble down to about the 35-yard line. They're going to give him about the 36. So it'll be close to a first down. They'll mark him just shy. And again, he's he's using his legs because the coverage of this Austrian defense has been very good. Yeah. They haven't been allowed. They haven't allowed Jefferson to really get loose in this game. But you got to get him going early. The same way Austria has been getting Simon involved in the game, they're going to have to get him involved in the game too. Eventually, just get the ball in Alexander's hands any way you can. Here we have Steven Yepo going for the stiff arm. A very, very nice tackle there. I believe that was number 24 on the tackle. We'll have to see on the replay. And 44. So great tackle by number 44, Simon Rito, to fight off the stiff, off the stiff arm from Yepno. And we've seen Yepno, he's a very powerful, strong back. It's not easy to fight off that kind of stiff arm from that strong of a back. So now second down and seven for Durant. Two back split formation. Austria showing pressure, only bringing four. Gets on to Yepo, and that's swallowed up immediately. Met in the backfield by number nine, Sebastian Schreiner, for a very far gain of zero on the play. And this Austrian defense is definitely going to make him work. They're not allowing him to get any room to make big plays, and I wouldn't. And did you see the collision between the French fullback 
and number 50 for Team Austria. That was violent, and on that one, it's a linebacker <laughs> one. So I'm sure that the French fullback's going to want to get his revenge later in the game. Duran, back to pass, looks left on the deep curl route, and complete, just shy of the 50-yard line to the to Andrew James, the man catching the deep post for a touchdown earlier in the game. Nice strike from Duran, and great protection from Team France. And he's been very productive in this tournament, and he has great speed. I mean, he's such a small guy. Again, they move him around a lot, outside, inside, and he's able to create space for himself to get the ball. And I think that they know that Jefferson's been the guy that's been scouted. So one thing that Durant is doing, Will, he's not doing what Sweden's quarterback was doing, was just favoring my target receiver. But I think that this is going to allow them to start to refocus to other receivers, and they're going to hit Jefferson when it matters. Exactly. Here we have a timeout from France trying to stop the clock with all, just over a minute left, a minute and two seconds left in the half. Austria up 14. Seven. France trying to get another touchdown just prior to halftime. Who was it who's gonna get the ball in the second half? I can't I, remember who got the opening kickoff. I think that Team, team Austria had the ball first, so France is probably gonna get it back at the half. Alright. Regardless, we're gonna focus on this one right here. A very soft the safeties are almost 15 yards deep on this one. Duran back to pass. He's Three man rush. He's got it. Wow. Oh. That one's going to be incomplete. That's a scary play right there with so many receivers flying into each other. Luckily, everyone able to get up all right. And I mean, it's first to 10. First to 10. Two time outs. Nice clean pocket. Only a three man rush for Team Austria. And that was actually almost, almost complete on the kind of premature Hail Mary throw. The crazy thing about it, it was his own teammate that cleaned him out, wasn't the defender. Guess he, guess he was making sure there was no room for error. So second down and ten, the star receiver, Jefferson Alexander, yet to make an impact on this game. He'll be at the top of your screen. Fred, Austria with a three safety look. And Duran will go down. That's a sack by number 47, Daniel Shannon. And that'll be a big loss for Team France all the way back at the 38-yard line, a loss of 10 on the play. That time, defensive lineman just wanted it more. Like, that offensive lineman didn't have a chance. I mean, he gave him a move that was out of this world as he used his hands, and the quarterback had nowhere to go. And that was a three-man rush. <laughs> this Austrian defensive line is not only big, but they're talented. There's some quick players up there. Now, if your team, if your team France, I'm thinking that he's definitely probably just going to try to... I, I would run the ball with 10 seconds left. Yeah, you're just... I wouldn't force anything here. Take care of the ball, Duran. Take care of the ball, please. All right. He's just going to send this one. Not my favorite throw, but at least it was incomplete. Absolutely. There are a lot of red jerseys in the area. But if I'm the coach, I don't even run a play. I would have let the clock run all the way down. Even if you complete that, the clock's going to run out. Absolutely. But Coach from France has been known for his aggressive play calling. I mean, let's not forget versus Finland, the league already solidified almost. And third, fourth down, he's throwing it deep. Gave Finland an extra chance and an onside kick that they actually should never have had. France back to punt. And he's actually going to punt this in the middle of the field. And it'll be out of bounds. I don't know if I like that technique. Even if it's fourth it's down, one second. fourth down with one second left, why even risk any type of what's taken in? Sometimes, you know, we cannot get into the minds of these coaches, but that's going to take us into halftime as Team Monster is going to go up 14 to 7 to end the half. And I have to say, this is a good one here today. I am, I am thrilled to be here with this one down in Vanta, Finland for the 2018. European Championship gold medal match already proving to be worth the price of admission. And your host Jabari Harris and myself will be back right after halftime. We'll have a few highlights, get some statistics for you as well as a few interviews. So we'll be back with you right after the halftime break.
Yes, obviously, when uh, two good teams face each other, uh, it's always a tight game, and then turnovers obviously make a difference here. Um, we gave a costly one away on the first down to keep the drive alive, and they capitalized, and now they are up. But thank God we got the second half option to get the ball, but we got to get the ball uh, going, the ground game going, and then if we catch the ball, we got to protect it. You have been playing quite a uh, low number box against Austria's offense, uh, and they have been utilizing their running backs quite well in the game. Are you going to adjust to that in, in any way? Uh, you bet your ass we're going to adjust. Uh, that's going to happen at halftime right now. Yeah. Thank you, coach, and uh, we wish you all the best for the second half. Näin siinä lyhyesti ytimäkkäksi. Aina hyvä tuli Patrick Esumeen. On hyvin avoin aina juttelemaan kaikista asioista. Hänellä on aikamoinen seuranto tuolla myös tuolla Ranskan päässä sitten näissä valmennushommissa. Mutta tässä vaiheessa tosiaan mennään kuuntelemaan Morris Draytonin haastattelua. Ja jälleen kerran päästään kuuntelemaan sitten NFL-ammattilaisen viettäjät Amerikan. You hear Morris. First of all, how does it feel back to here in Villara, New Zealand? Oh, it's great to be back here in town. Uh, uh, I'm surrounded by great people. As soon as the plane touched down, I actually felt like I was back at home. Okay, so what, what is the biggest memory from Finland you carry with you? Do you still got any Finnish words with you, or for example? <laughs> A few words. Uh, Kitos, Halehuva, uh, Hey Hey. Uh, great words. Yes, yes. No bad words. Yeah. <laughs> So the year was 2006 when you played played in the Crocodile season, ended with broken Achilles uh, in the second game. Tell us shortly, how have the road drive you to the NFL after that year? Well, it's always been a goal to uh, be at the highest level in football, uh, but after suffering Achilles injury, it, it forced me to really uh, utilize the mental aspect of the game versus using uh, my athletic ability. So uh, I had the opportunity to really study the game, understand the game, and uh, try to come up with tips that could help, uh, you know, others. So what, what, when you leave the Finland, what, what was the next nation? Uh, believe it or not, I went back and I, I, I enrolled in a master's program and I got a master's in uh, secondary administration. I was working at a high school, uh, teaching, coaching, uh, being an administrator. And then from there, I jumped into the college ranks and just worked my way up. So you were in Citadel, right? Yes, uh, I did two stints at the Citadel. Uh, I was at the Citadel before I came here, actually, and then I went back to the Citadel, and I was the defensive coordinator, assistant head coach, uh, and secondary coach. Uh, so uh, that's home for me as well, too, so I was able to cut my teeth, and uh, uh, they allowed me to be a part of uh, my personal maturation process to become better. So how did the door open to the NFL? There's a, a gentleman named Joe Witt. Uh, we worked together at the Citadel. He introduced me to a guy named Tom McMahon. Uh, after I left Finland in 2006, I did an internship uh, with the Atlanta Falcons. And uh, through that relationship, just working hard, uh, Tom gave me the opportunity to get into the NFL. And I'm very thankful. So how have you ended to coach special teams? Well, uh, being a little guy, uh, playing a big man sport, I had to find my niche or find a way to get on the field. And special teams gave me that option. Uh, and once learning special teams, uh, I fell in love with it, and uh, the sky's been the limit ever since. In Finland, there's lots of talk that teams don't use enough time, uh, time in special teams. How, how's that in NFL? <laughs> Not only in Finland, but uh, in the NFL, in college as well, too. Uh, special teams coordinators, we're a unique breed, and we're always fighting for time. But at the same time, we do more with less, and we find a way to get it done. So we all know kickers, punters, and even some long snappers from the NFL, but do you, do you draft any players for playing just other special teams positions? 
Uh, that's something, something we definitely look at. at. Uh, when, when I was, I was in Indianapolis, Indianapolis uh, Tom McMahon, McMahon did a great job of teaching me how to study uh, uh, the position groups and how they can be utilized in the special teams realm. Uh, so we definitely look at their special teams value as we draft these guys. So for this season, you joined, uh, joined Packers coaching staffs. How have the work been under head coach Mike McCarthy? Interesting. He is a uh, he's an old Irish guy, and he's hard, and uh, he he gets after it. But he's a good man. He treats us well, and we do everything there first uh, first class. So open up a little bit your weekly job. We know what you do on Sundays, but how's the other six days on the week? Well, the season kind of rotates. During the off season, it's a little more relaxed. Uh, we do a lot of film study, a lot of research. Uh, we're very pragmatic in what we do. We're very percentage based, uh, based upon these studies. Uh, during the season, uh, it's it's pretty rough. I get in the office. Uh, probably about 0, 0600, uh, 0, 0530, and go home some nights 2300, 2400, just depends. Okay, so Packers so play in, in NFL North without predictions in that division. Well, I learned a long time ago, you don't make predictions. Uh, I know I'm in Bears country. There's a lot of Chicago Bears fans here. And then my good buddy Eric uh, being with the Lions. Uh, let's just hope we win at least one more than both those teams. So right now it's it's almost beat summer. What are, what are the schedule for you going towards the season? Uh, well, luckily for me, I'll have holiday when I leave here. I have to take my son. Uh, we're going to look at colleges. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, getting back, I have a few clinics that I have to do in uh, in the states. So now you're in, here in Finland uh, teaching some special teams and uh, tackling and ball security, etc. Here in Finland, what are the biggest advice you get give us uh, well a lot of times when we do clinics I just want to give uh, information that that can be taken back and, and utilized I just don't want to give a bunch of fluff uh, so any questions they have I'm going to answer it to the best of my ability thank you Mr. Drayton and enjoy your time here in Finland good luck for the season thank you very much Kitos. Kitos. <laughs>
successful stopping France strong run game uh, but you have gained few long passes to the middle are you gonna do any adjustments to your secondary on the second half no uh, we just we just gotta keep pressuring uh, Paul Duran keep uh, Yitmo in, in check who's, who's a great running back and then uh, if you watch us we sit over the top and then we just gotta make a play uh, we just we just think they, they're running it a lot they ran it in the last games and uh, we, if we can mix in the run stopping with pressuring the quarterback which is a good 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 uh, way to do it is to blitz him with run blitzes and then obviously uh, if he play action fakes it he can't sit on the platform back there that's kind of what we try to do and then sit over the top kind of give him the medium route passes the quick balls and then rattle the troops around it that's kind of what we're trying to do let him work for for every inch thank you coach Fatahan uh, we wish you all the best for the second half thank you very much
it could be an interesting matchup, especially with the uh, speedy wide receivers number 81 and 80 from the France, how they can uh, elevate their game. Well, actually, Olin, again, two interceptions earlier today in the bronze medal game. Thank you for joining us, and congratulations on the bronze medal victory. Thank you very much. and we still haven't seen a catch by number 81, Jefferson Alexandre. And again, like I said, I think that's because they want to get the other guys involved so it won't be a one-man show. Exactly. And I'm going to have to start looking a little bit more closely. Are, are they double-teaming Alexandre in every play? What's forcing Duran to look away from it as they toss it to the right to Yemos? Dives forward for a gain of about five. It doesn't seem that he's been double teamed. He's been on the outside. And we have an injured French player on the play. That's tight end number 44, Kevin Wamba, who caught the pass earlier and then fumbled. Slow to get up. I mean, he's been their primary tight end in this game who's been doing a lot of work in the passing game as well. You definitely don't want to lose him in a game like this because he's kind of been the staple of the offense. And I think it was just a stinger because he hopped up and jogged off under his own power, leaving the trainers in his dust. So I think he's all right. Just maybe got the wind knocked out or something. Absolutely. He's probably going to miss a play and try to get right back out there as he knows the importance of this game for the country and the team of France. So second and five now. Bunch formation to the left of Duran. Austria, too high look. Alexandre down at the bottom of your screen. Duran, a handoff to Yekmo. Spins off of one tackle, but his helmet will come off, and that's a little bit dangerous. Ref's doing a good job of blowing the play dead. Unfortunately for Yekmo, his helmet came off because if it would have stayed on, he could have had, he would have rolled forward for about four more, but good job by the refs calling the play dead and stopping him where the helmet came off. I think he's going to probably have to come off the field. And he's going to have to be forced off the field as he has had every carry in this game up until this point. So a new running back checks into the game on third down and three for France as they come out in a more spread look. Two, two receivers to the left, tight end to the left. Running back and Alexandre to the bottom of the screen. 
Austria showing blitz, brings four. Durant steps up in the pocket, and he's going to have enough room for a first down and more as he sidesteps a tackle and a nice open field tackle there by number 21, Martin Shield, but not after Durant picks up around 25 yards and a first down for France. And I like how Durant really just enforced it. I mean, that pressure was getting back there. The only thing I would like to see at this point is him getting down. Understand, he's the starting quarterback in the big game. He does not need to risk himself. And we watched earlier in the bronze medal game, Philip Mueller, the quarterback for Sweden. A bit stockier guy, someone you're a little bit more comfortable with taking hits. But Durant, sitting at 80 kilos, a little bit lighter. You don't want your 80 kilo quarterback taking that many hits. It's the right track. And he's down inside the 10. Touchdown, France. Number 28, Jason Akbar. <laughs> they got to give credit to Stephen Yepmo. They say but Stephen Yepmo, but that was definitely not Yepmo. But they definitely looking like the Dreads, I guess. Uh, I guess so. And this guy, I guess he's been on that sideline waiting for his opportunity as he's still going his way to the end zone. And good Very job tight rope in the sideline at the end as well. Good balance and, self and body control. And wow, just like that, France is back in the game. It's a tie ball game. And that was a big time run there by Jason. Extra point is up, and that will tie it 14 to 14. France, on the opening drive of the second, of the third quarter, excuse me, ties it up with Austria. But still, Austrian offense looks really hot going into halftime. Does this take any of the wind out of the sails, or do they keep that locomotive rolling? Rolling up. I don't think that what the defense is doing has any impact on what the Austrian offense is doing right now. The reason I say that is because of the coaching. I think that he's going to keep these guys focused and he's going to keep them within the game plan. But still, that was a textbook hard run by that guy. This first stiff arm is nasty. And I think this is his first oh second carry game of the slick of the He just leaves him in the dirt. That's, that's just nasty. <laughs> nasty. That is a bad man. And I mean, just when you needed a surge of energy right there, backup running back comes in the game and says, put me in, let Booby spin. And Booby <laughs> got to spin it on that play. Beautiful. <laughs> France set to kick off. Alexandre boots it down the left side, keeping the ball away from Blotz Boomer. And still... These special teams have been stout on both sides of the ball, still fighting for it. French year. It's only going to get up to about the 21, 22 yard line where Austria will take over. These guys are flying down to the ball. But I like that directional kick. Kick it away from Blotzkoer. Give, give it to Vincent Mueller as Blotzkoer already has a kick return for a touchdown in this tournament. So don't even give that man a chance. And you've already seen what he can do in the open field. He had a 42 yard rushing touchdown. Untouched. He's too fast. I like that you're not kicking until a smart play by the coaches. So we're going to see what Team Oscar can do out here on offense as they get the ball with 8.51 in the third quarter. They're going to be first and 10 here. Two by two formation for Tori. And start off with an inside zone. Cuts up. And he's going to get just enough, just short of a first down. And that is Blotz Boomer on the carry. And that's the younger of the two Blotz Boomer brothers. This one's son, Sandro. And the older, his older brother, number four, Adrian. But again, this offensive line for Austria, making it pretty easy for the running backs. But the running backs are doing a great job of finding the hole the offensive line gives them. And then a burst of speed. They're not dancing in the hole. They are hitting it. This time, Tony keeps it, throws it out to the bubble, but incomplete on the low bubble blast. I like the idea. You've been running it inside so far, and they haven't shown that bubble look yet. So, Tony keeps it, and then flips it out to the outside, and with a better placed ball, that's an easy first down. Absolutely. Got this big man out there with a big-time block. I mean, that's one thing you like about him. He doesn't just run routes and catch balls. With that frame, he's a good blocker, too. Yeah, he is, and that pass was intended for number 80, Philip Hahn, from the Dinuba Dragons in the Austrian Football League. A speedy slot receiver. Gonna see something different here as he goes up under center. And it's gonna be a rough play. And France looks to have bottled them up. A big stop for France on third down. Will bring up fourth. 
and I'm assuming Austria is going to punt it away in this. You don't want to go for it on fourth and one this deep in your zone and not get it. So they will bring out the punt team. And France should get pretty good punt field position after this one. But did you see number 54 in the head pin that offensive guard back into the backfield? Anytime you can get that type of moment, that type of push into the backfield and hold your ground, they say set your anchor. Once you get past the line of scrimmage, set your anchor. You don't want to push too deep into the backfield because that allows cutback lanes. Get in there, cause some disruption, set your anchor. Good job there by France on that play. And here we have a return opportunity, one of the few of the game. And just like all the other ones, not going to go very far. And that's number one for Team France. That's going to be Amir Kalani on the return. And he's not going to get much as he's gobbled up on the sideline there by the special teams of Team Austria. So France will start off on their own 37-yard line for their second drive of the first half. And on the first drive, looked pretty dominant running the ball right down Austria's throat. We'll see if they can keep that going on this drive. And if we see a little bit more of Jason and have him step in a little bit more for Stefan because he looked a little bit fresh on that last drive. Absolutely. If you're team France, you got to be confident right now because you've tied the ball game up. Offense is starting to find some rhythm. Defense stepping up. I think they're going to keep it on the ground here. And that they will inside handoff, but a penalty prior to the play, and that makes me think it's a false start by the offense, considering they blew the whistle right before the ball was snapped. And so that it will be. Looks like they were going to try to go back to that inside zone, but there's going to be a penalty this time on the play. First and 15 for the French Brigade. Two receivers to the left, tight end to the right, single receiver to the right. Austria showing blitz and will bring it. Play action pass and a screen set up. And Yepo has got some room and the few blockers in front of him cuts to the middle of the field and he's got some space. Yepo finally brought down by Andreas Lunzer. Looks like, ooh, looks like he's going to get that ankle tangled up and by the alligator tackle there. Got a big play on that screen, and looks like he just got it rolled in the tackle. You'll see it coming up here. The big man just kind of uh, buckled it there, and he's going to be shaken up on the play. Obviously hoping Yepo's all right. He's walking gingerly off the field on that ankle. Obviously wishing the best for Yepo. Luckily for Team France, we've already seen his backup, Jason, have a lot of success running. So we already know they have confidence in the backup. Obviously, it'd be best if they have two guys at their disposal, but you've got to work with what you have at that point. And that was a great play call by the French offensive coordinator. Austria bringing blitz on first down and long, trying to make it an even longer second down situation. Great time to throw the screen pass, and he had his entire offensive line out in front of him to block. So now it's going to be time for Booby to get some shine as Yepo goes out, and he's going to get a completion there, and that's going to be a big time catch. And you know what? I really like how they have a lot of similar style players that they can mix in. So number 44 went out, 31 comes in at the tight end position. Doesn't look like they missed the beat. Yepmo goes out, then 28 comes in, and he's running the ball just as hard. They did a good job recruiting for this system. You can definitely see the depth that they have, and they have a lot of those big fullback type bodies working in at tight end, fullback all over the place. They can move them in different positions, and the fact that they have the depth at that position and running back, like you said, obviously showing the dividends right now. Bridge formation for France on second and short. It's going to be a play action. Durant rolling out, finds his man in the flats, and that's going to be enough for a first down and a little bit more as he rolls down just shy of the 25 and lets him know it's a first down. And these are very easy, simple reads right here. It's almost like a little fire pass where you do the play action and you sneak the fullback out to the right with the seems like a flood concept coming behind it. And that's going to be called by number 31. That's going to be Jerome Valboon. 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 And he's one of the players in this tournament that didn't have to make that far of a trip. He 
thanks for the Vasa Royals just five dollars away. So we've seen a lot of players in this tournament playing in Finland and they're not all just from the Finnish team. Play action once again, flings it out on the bubble pass, missed tackle by one, and he's got a little bit of space. And that's the danger about the bubble pass. So even if your DB's in position, it's a it's one-on-one -on -one in the open field, and if you can make one guy miss, like he did right there, you've got some space. And so he made, turns a what could have been a tackle for zero yards into one for 12. And that's a very hard tackle to make when you're coming downhill at that angle full, full speed. speed. You have to break down and try to make a textbook tackle. And that time he didn't make it, but we did see Jefferson out there with some good blocking. So he hasn't really been able to get involved in the game in the passing game. But I think that he's being respected. As you see, there's a corner and a safety favorite over the top of him. Eventually, I think you have to force the ball to him to get the ball in your playmaker's hand as Duran looks over the middle. Almost a miraculous catch by number 80, Nelson Simi, going up high for that one. Unfortunately, just a bit too tall. But I like the throw from Duran because if he throws that any lower, it's intercepted. Absolutely. It is a great ball. Giving his receiver a chance, not a great chance, but anywhere else that ball goes, it's picked off. Absolutely. You show, it shows the confidence this quarterback has right now to make that throw. Most quarterbacks, as soon as they see someone in front of their guy in the end zone, they're going another way. They're going, they're, they're going somewhere else with the ball. <laughs> great confidence, and we can see the accuracy this young quarterback has. Duran, quick slant, got his guy, there Alexandre. And he's going to fight down just short of the goal line, down to the one-yard line. And this guy's explosive, I'm telling you, man. He catches that quick slant right there, one-step slant. And he almost got in that paint just then. He dropped his shoulder. And it looks like Team France is in control here. Yeah, their offense obviously fixed some of the things that weren't working in the first half and showing a lot of firepower in the second half. Looking to take a touchdown lead here early in the third quarter or midway through the third quarter. So we're going to have first to go here, ball on the two-yard line. And Yepmo's back in there. You only have to guess that this is going to be a run play. Hands it off. He has room. Did he get in? Doesn't look like he crossed the plane, and the ball I'm actually sure came I'm out. Sure he's claiming it was a fumble, but I don't think the refs are calling it that. I think they're going to say he was down. Let's we get a better view. The ball did come out. The ball was out right away. I don't know if any of the referees saw that, but the ball was out, and it was recovered by Austria. France, gonna... <laughs> France is fortunate on that one. That they're keeping the ball right now. Absolutely. And I think that's, not officially, but that's his second fumble of the game, and he's taking some blows in there. So France very fortunate to maintain possession on this one. Second and goal from the two-yard line. I won't be surprised to see the play action flat to the and there, back. there it is. Play action, wide open, touchdown, hey. France. Number 31, Jerome Valbon, wide open in the end zone. And Barry, you called those two last two plays perfectly. You said it was going to be a run, then you called play action with the flats, and you got it. Well, it, only, were open. it only made sense. I mean, they're in a heavy run formation, double tight end. Austria is showing blitz. They want to get back there. Fullback wide open in the flat. I mean, if Paul can make that throw. And they actually had two guys open. There was a fullback open in the flat and the tight end. And the tight end. The <laughs> he, had go. he had a touchdown. He had his pick. So now France, after trailing earlier in this game, has now come back to take a seven-point lead. And this is a different ball game, just like that. And if you would have asked me before the game, how does France win this game, I would have told you Jerome Alexandre has to have a huge monster game for France to win this one. He has one catch for like 10 yards, and France is up by seven. And I think that that's just, that's just the talent that they have and the coach figuring out ways to use it. I mean, they were forcing that run, forcing that run, forcing that run. And again, that play-action passing game that we talked about versus Finland, at first it was 81, but now it's the tight ends and the fullbacks. And I will say, Duran is doing a great job of just give, taking what the defense is giving you. He's not afraid to just check it down into the flats, throw a swing to his running backs. He's not forcing the ball downfield very much right now, not taking any risky throws. So, good job by Duran maintaining the game plan so far. Here we have Blatt
Scott Schumer on the kick return. Wiggles his way forward to about the 34-yard line, about the, yeah, the 34, where Austria will take a hold of the ball to start this possession. And now Austria's in a, on a little bit of the back foot now. They had all the momentum in the first half, and suddenly France has come up with a surge in the second half and taken a quick seven-point lead. And I think that this is where they're going to have to start getting that passing game going. They're going to have to allow number seven to make some plays for them. Right now, they're doing a good job on the ground, but you have to let the big man make some big plays All for right. you. Right now, there is no safety in the middle of the field, and you have one-on-one -on -one coverage. At some point, you gotta, you, you have to go after it. Safety rotates to the middle, but and they're going to hand it off. And he's going to get gobbled up. And as I said, they got to get the passing game going because Team France has figured this run game out. So that's exactly what I was talking about early on. France is playing too high safety, double covering Soikovitz. And that's why Austria is having success running. Now France's answer is take one of those safeties down, load them into the box, stop the run. They're focusing on stopping the run now. So now Austria needs to make their change and say, oh, you're just going to leave Soikovitz one-on-one? -on -one? You're not going to have a safety over top helping? Okay, we'll go after him then. Now I expect Austria to try to exploit that now that the running, now that France is loading the box up. And we've seen this. This is the same adjustment that Team Fran made versus Team Finland. Exactly. So here we go. Tori drops back to pass. Going to be pressure. Rotates. And he's right. throw it away. Throw it away. Good, good decision there. Good decision. Now the thing Alexander is, Tori. I don't think they have a lot of time for the play action pass because this pressure is coming fast. He might just have to just do a straight drop back and get number seven one-on-one -on -one because it's only one safety in the middle of the field. And regardless if these corners are playing deep or not, we know that he can run that route to the sideline and he can pull that ball in. Who else I want to see get involved more on this Austrian offense is Adrian Botskuma, a very talented slot receiver. Haven't even really, we seen one pass just on a simple hitch thrown his way that the DB made a nice play on. I'd like to see him against a single high look, maybe throw a corner or a wheel route to him. Looks like he's going to be coming across on a drag. He's going to hit him. To him. Nice play there by number 36, I believe, from France. And that's Maxine Roger. That's a good job by him with staying over him and being able to run all the way across the formation with him. So that's going to be another, another fourth down, punting it away. And Team France, they've come out after halftime and they've just bought into their system of what they want to do. They knew that they saw everything that Team Austria could give to them. They know who the playmakers are, and their adjustment is to at least limit one of them. And they chose for it to be running back Platzgomer. Set back the punt. This one's going to be returnable. As it's going to be Amir Kalani. Just shy of the 40-yard line is Amir. Nice return by Team France, and you can feel the energy definitely shifting towards France now. And if they score here, Austria is in a world of hurt. Absolutely. And we have a little bit under two minutes left with 141, and this is a, a half that seems that it's been dominated by Team France on both sides of the ball here. It was Austria in the first half. Now the tables have completely flipped, and now it's France dominating in the second half. Uh, there was a penalty on the play. Looks like it's going to come back for a few yards. The number 44 is going to come back into the game. He was shaken up earlier. It's going to be tight end Kevin Mwamba. They're going to give Steven Yumbo a little bit of a break to start this drive. Backup running back number 28, Jason, in the game. So it's going to be first and ten, and they're going to be back up deep here after the penalty. Wing back to the left, single back behind Duran. He gives it to Jason, and he's going to be swallowed up after only a short gain of about one. 
Good job, good play by number 75, Felix Schildorfer, to make the stop. And he's been having a, a very decent game, not making every tackle, but he's forcing, when, his, when the run is to his side, he's forcing everything back into traffic. And he's been doing a good job using his hands, getting off blocks, and making plays when he needs to. And we have another player down for France. This time it's number 75, Bastien Pereira. And that's one thing we've seen quite a bit of today, unfortunately, is a lot of guys going down. And we talked about the reasons why that could be earlier. Obviously, in regular football season, you have a couple practices a day, a week, and those aren't all too strenuous. And then you have one game. In just this single week, they've had three, this is their third football game. And for France, their games have been a little bit more competitive, a little bit more physically tolling than it has been for Austria. So. Obviously, it's tough whenever you're playing this physical of a game over a seven-day period. Three games, that's tough. It's definitely a grind, and you have to commend these men of still coming out here playing hard under the circumstances. Durant on the slam, caught by Alexandre. There is a flag in the backfield that appears to be in the vicinity of holding as they try to get the ball to their star receiver. And now we're starting to see them feature him in a quick game, getting out quick, three-step slant. Look at that body. Again, another big body receiver. We've seen some nice receivers in this tournament, yes. I tell you. And he's got, he might have one of the best set of hands I've seen out of the receivers. You see, especially on that slant route, how soft his hands were. No bobble. Looks really natural. A really good receiver for Team France. And it was going to be holding, so that'll back Team France up. So now in this situation, you have to be extremely careful to not make a mistake and give up easy six, seven points to Team Austria. And we've seen it happen. If I'm the OC for friends, though, I trust Duran. He's shown game in and game out. He's capable of making smart decisions on a game-to-game -game basis. Second down and 14. Duran and Shotgun going to do a draw play. A draw play. And that is swallowed up by Team Austria. That might even lose a yard. And the Austrian defense really holding firm here. Quick draw play, and again, that number 47 for Team Austria really making a big play. That's going to be Daniel Schoonet for and the tackle there, and he's really just working hard in there at that defensive tackle position. And Austria bringing out their third down defensive unit. Three safeties sitting right out of the sticks. Three so down linemen. Duran back to pass, pumps the bubble, comes back weak to a screen pass to Jason, and he's going to be swallowed up after a gain of only two. So great job by this Austrian defense. Once France, a couple self-inflicted penalties, push them back a little bit. Austria takes full advantage of it, gets a nice stop. So now France will be punting with their punter inside his own end zone. And Austria is looking for great field position after this one. And if you get good field position, you need to be able to capitalize on it and strike as we reach the end of the third quarter and get to the fourth. And we're going to go into the fourth quarter now. With a lead change here, it's going to be Team France up 21, Austria 14, and that was a quarter that was clearly won by Team France as they were able to answer some questions on defense and slow down this running game by Team Austria and get their game running and passing going, and now they're in the lead going into the fourth quarter. And I really believe this was going to come down to the wire, Brandon. I can't argue with that one at all. a few of the highlights, Duran using his feet more than we've seen him use it earlier in this tournament. Nice high punt, forces Platzkummer all the way back oh. to his own 40. And that is exactly, what a great punt by the French punter. Oh, and one of the refs is down. Uh-oh, we've seen this a few times. See if we can see what happened. If the camera scrolls down. 
not able to see from that angle. Apparently one of the players ran into him. As I said earlier, you're going to be an official in these games. You're going to have to be in shape. You're going to have to be able to move. Hopefully he's all right. But again, a great punt by number 80, Nelson Simi. Because I was expecting Austria to have field position within on the other side, on France's side of the, ball, of the field. But now he backed him all the way up to the 40 from his own end zone. A great punt. Absolutely. And here's the, about here's the formation I like again. Two split backs. Sokovitz to the boundary. And this time play action. Got a wheel. And he's going to go for him. Ooh. And it looked like that him, the quarterback, Terry, and Plotskumer just weren't on the same page on that one. Plotskumer felt the linebacker heavy on top of him, so wanted to check it down. But Doherty still wanted to throw it over the top. And that was the safety, excuse me, Sejan covering him. And I think Plotskumer probably was right. I mean, the safety was over the top. You got to throw that one down and low to the backside. But I thought that he had the big man open on the post there. It looked like a cover three look as they moved to this one high look. So after the incompletion, second down and ten. Alexander Thore back to pass again. Quick slant to the left. Got his man up to the 48-yard line. Will being, bring up a third down and short. And they're going to give forward progress up to the 49. So it'll be third and one. And we'll see if Austria chooses to go back to the run game. But France, in the third quarter, has really stifled an Austrian run game that was dominant in the first half. Absolutely. And, like, it's just a battle of trenches. I think that France has just of a strong, big quality D-line as Team Austria does. And the difference is they're just stepping it up in the second half as they know that this is all that they have left if they want to win a gold medal today. Seven-man box for France, single high safety, and they are going to run it. Good pressure from Team France, and they're going to stop him. A loss of two on the play. And the pursuit and penetration by by this Team France defense in this second half has really been something special. I mean, Team Monster seemed earlier that they were going to really just pound it on the ground, but Team France has just found a surge of motivation here in this second half, and they're not allowing it. And that'll bring up a punt here. Sojkovic, the big, tall receiver, back to punt. We see again number one, Amir Kilani for France, back to receive. Kalani playing for the Flash in the French League. Punt almost blocked. And a bad bounce oh. for Austria. Oh. That'll take a backwards bounce of about five yards. And France will take over at their own 25-yard line. So if you're Team France, you have a lot of time, but you want to work some of it. You want to, I wouldn't be too concerned with working it. It's too close to the game, and just one play, this game could be tied, tied up. So if I'm France, I run my, uh, my bread and butter. I go back to what's been working, my vanilla offense, exactly what you've been doing. I don't change anything up yet. Absolutely. Once the clock gets below five, six minutes, then you start working the clock. But here, it's too early in the fourth. Man in motion. And it'll be a draw play. And he's going to be swallowed up, and that's going to be, again, big number 97, Bahar Moser. And he's had a good game today. He's played well. We'll see. He, look how he uses his hands. He just swims the... Oh, and that should have been a penalty. You can see that he had the big guy had his hand underneath the back of the helmet of the running back. Mm. And any time, you can call face mask for that. The face mask doesn't have to be just on the face mask part of the helmet. If you if you get your hand clamped and clawed under any part of the helmet to bring, help you bring down a tackle, that's, that's considered a face, a face mask. mask. So that should have been, that's a missed call of 15 yards right there. So after the loss of one, second down and 11, Duran back to pass, throws to the right, and again we see that deep curl route completed to and he, Alexandre. And like I said, remember we were talking earlier how I really believed that he was going to get going and get active towards the end of, or towards the crunch time of the game where the attention hasn't been so much on him and it's been around to the other guys. Now he's here making those big catches that we've seen throughout the whole series. Exactly. I feel like that curl route is his favorite route. That, it's, it's, probably, it's one of the only routes France runs. It's either a curl route or a flat route by a tight end or fullback. 
So after the 11 yard gain, it'll be first down and 10 for France up at the 35 yard line. Austria showing blitz, only rushes four, inside handoff, and he'll be taken down after about a three yard gain. And there's a flag, a late flag on the play. And it doesn't be, seem to be in the vicinity of any kind of type of players. I wonder if this is a sideline infraction. France is signaling it's on Austria. I don't know. There was no Austrian player in the vicinity of the flag. I don't know where the flag came. Personal foul on Austria. The ref's mic is malfunctioning, so we're not able to hear who the penalty was on. But it was weird. the flag. Whenever I saw it thrown, there wasn't a single player from either team within 15 yards of the penalty flag. So the ref must have seen something from far away and thrown the flag. Not sure what he saw, but obviously thought it was worth the penalty. So after the 15-yard penalty, first and ten for France at the 47-yard line of Austria. Pull back in motion to the left. Duran on the quick slant and that off the helmet of the defender. Number 20, Patrick Pilger. And again, he had the slant. He had Jefferson open on the slant just a little bit too high that time. And, you know, kind of good coverage there by the Austrian defense. I mean, they've seen it a few times. So want to be a little bit more careful when making that throw. Right, right there with him on the coverage. And you're, you're right. You always get scared any time a ball pops up like that. The football, with the odd shape it is, it can take a bounce any direction. Lucky it didn't bounce right to an Austrian player. Absolutely. We're going to see Jefferson lined up down here at the bottom of the screen. And has big cushion there. And we have flags. Or a timeout, possibly, prior to the snap. And it will be a false start against France. So that will back him up five. Let's bring up second and 15. What do you think? Do they, go, do they go back to the deep curl? Yeah, eventually he's going to get back to it. I'm not so sure he's going to go to it now on second and 15. I mean, I think the coaches finally figured out that they can't run. So if he wants to be safe, he wants to make that curl, not a 15-yard curl. But if he can try to get three to four to five yards here, it makes it a bit better on third down. I would love to see a curl and go. You've run the curl so much. Pump it and go. And your offensive line has held up really well against this Austrian front so far. Sean Blitz. Inside run. Good hole created by the offensive line. And up close to the, just past the original line of scrimmage to the 45, a gain of seven on the play. We'll bring up third and manageable third and eight. And it looked like Yumbo is still sidelined after that ankle twist, and Jason is still in the backfield. And again, now you have a third and manageable. I think from third and eight, you can still play for two downs, you know? You can still probably try to get five yards here and go for it on fourth and short. Or you can punt it and pin them back, knowing that your defense is playing well. The defense has stepped up big time for France here in the second half. Duran back to pass. Wheel around to the right, got the He's gonna the check it down here. And jumping forward for the first down is Alexandre. And that's a beautiful play design. Again, those crosses that have been so dangerous off the off the drop back. So you're going to see him. He's going to come all the way across from the outside receiver position and just get lost in traffic. And a nice, easy completion for the quarterback. Not asking him to do too much again. Just the bread and butter of this France offense. Fresh set of downs down to the 36, knocking on the door of Austria once again is France. And this time we're going to have a timeout from France. I think the play clock might have been getting a little low, and the coach noticed it, didn't think his quarterback did. Call timeout. Absolutely. You definitely don't want to take any penalties right now where you have good momentum, you're moving the ball, and you know that a score at this point in the game puts you up by two scores. It can be big time here. Exactly. And they've already taken about three and a half minutes off the clock on this drive. 
and they're not even to the 30-yard line yet, so they can still take a good two minutes off this clock. And if they have a five-minute drive here and score, and leave the score 28-14 to 14 with five minutes left, I don't want to say it, but that might be it for Austria. <laughs> But hey, the football gods have been good to the players today, so expect the unexpected at all times here, as this is the championship game, and no one has anything to lose. And this has been a great tournament. We've seen some great football here, and you want to give a big kudos again to American Football International for broadcasting this game for the fans all across the world to be able to witness these European championships. And here we go, first to 10, Team France, with the ball on the 35-yard line. Duran back to pass, looks over the middle, got, got his man on the curl route. Again, first down. And this play action curl is man, it's been they do this in their sleep. That's just good timing, good ball, and way to use your body. And as you said, those soft hands defender right on his back. It's almost like he didn't even notice the defender was there. Softly <laughs> caught it, went to the ground, popped back up. And if you're Austrian, this is where you really need to buckle down. If you're a DB, if I'm the DB coach, I'm telling the guys, start jumping routes. We, we need a turnover. We can't just sit back, let them complete these curls. Start being aggressive on defense and going for the play. It's going to be a decent carry there for number 28, I believe. It's going to be Jason. Gain of about two on the play. We'll bring up second down and eight. And these running backs for France are... Very, very, very strong and very big. And more elusive. You know, a lot of times whenever you see backs this powerful, they don't have that little shifty gear in them. These guys are not the shiftiest in the world, but they've got enough of it to get by, and they use it well. Jason, the lone back in the backfield. Duran drops back to pass, looks right, going to have to throw it away. Good, good throw away by Duran there as he was under heavy duress and it's really no one open, even the tight end in the flats. Good coverage by Team Austria. That was number 50, Azim Abdel, applying the pressure there. And we haven't really seen as much pressure from Team Austria today as we did in their semi-final game against Team Sweden. France has really done a good job of picking up all the different pressures and stunts that Austria has brought. Duran, play action pass. Throws to the middle of the field, and, and that wow. is a touchdown. There he is. And that is a strike right there. And there, that's exactly what they were waiting for. They were patient, they ran the ball, they nibbled and dimed it, and they caught him on that skinny post, and he just stuck it in there. Nice throw, nice catch. And you wonder, looking at the replay, the safety, number 23, whenever Alexandre caught that ball, his heels were on the back of the end zone. Why are you sitting at the back of the end zone? He is not trying to beat deep. Beat, beat. Are you trying to get, you're not going to get beat deep at the back of the end zone, brother. Step up. If, you, if you're three yards forward, that ball is right in his chest. Instead, he's sitting at the back of the end zone with a receiver three yards in front of him. And let's look at this replay again. It was a double post, and he was breaking on the first post. But you've got the other safety on the other side. Exactly. It's a double post combination. Trust that your other teammate is there. You play your position. Don't worry about the other guy, and you'll be standing right there. And to all my young defenders, this is what happens when you don't do your job. Offense is going to take advantage of what the defense gives. And that time, he gave a touchdown to the playmaker, Jefferson. And Brandon, with 525 left in the way this French defense is playing, as you said, this could be it. This is tough. And that's the second time two of France's touchdowns there, both on post, were because of the safeties misplaying. So now France is going to go up 28-14, and the Austrians, friend, the Austrian fans here are stunned as they had a lead all the way.
midway through the first half and now down by two scores. And if you're team France, you have to be feeling very good right now. Late in the fourth with a 14-point lead. Plotzkummer from the five. And this is where you can use one of his elusive big-time plays. And he'll get it out to around the 30, but that's about it. And if you're team France, you're okay with that. You're okay with that. That's still 70 yards of offense that needs to be driven. That's a lot of clock that's going to be worked if it's not done fast. And again, special teams has been doing well, not allowing the big play. Exactly. And one of the difficult things for Team Austria in this half is in the first half, their defense was getting stops and quick stops, so they kept getting the ball back to their offense. This time, it feels like we've barely seen the Austrian offense even on the field this entire half. This might be their maybe their third possession of the entire half, third or fourth, so not nearly as many touches for the offense. France doing a great job keeping their offense on the field. And Austria is off. So now that's going to be an incomplete pass as they go second and ten. And now they're going to have to throw the ball because they're going to need a quick score and not necessarily an onside kick with three timeouts, but they're going to have to depend on their defense to stop France. And so far in the second half, they haven't. No, not at all. Not at all. So France now back to this too high look, knowing that they're going to have to throw the ball. And looks like they're going to play some man coverage here. He's going to find a man up, and he's going to come up and make a big tackle right there. Nice play there from number seven of France. That's Alphonse Jean. Nice, solid, secure tackle. So now it's third down, and this could be a make or break conversion right here. I'm sure they're going to have to go for it on fourth anyway. You're down by two scores, but this you're going for it regardless of how long fourth down is at this point in the game. Under five minutes left, down two. They're in desperation mode. Totally back to pass. Surveying the field. He's got Soikovic just standing there with just no missed him. Throws it late. He had him. He had him for about six seconds to begin the play and decided to throw it to him when he was already covered. And that's all and, and that's what you talk about. You can't throw the ball late across the middle of the field. And that time it almost cost them an interception. And I think that was Thorny just trying to be a little bit too greedy, feeling like his team's down by 14, looking for just the monster play. Just take the easy first down, get a fresh set of downs. Now it's fourth down. If you don't make this, France has the ball at year 35, and you're in huge trouble. Take the first down, guarantee at least four more downs. Now you're only guaranteed one more down. So we're going to have a timeout here as they're going to talk it up on the sideline. And what a great game of football we've seen We've seen from these two teams. Overall, today has been a great day of football. We saw Team Britain come out after struggling all tournament and walk away with not finishing last place but with the win. Team Finland last game and what was a nail biter until the end come out and finish up against Team Sweden and now it looks like Team France in the driver's seat of winning the entire tournament today versus Team Austria. Exactly and the difference of this game is the coaches. France made adjustments at the second at, at halftime and Austria hasn't made any adjustments and it's showing right now because France has dominated this entire second half both on offense and defense scoring 21 straight points. So here it is for Austria, fourth down, going to the big guy Soikovic, and that'll be a first down on the slant route. And as I've called him throughout this tournament, that's Mr. That's Mr. Reliable. Look how he gets down there with that big frame and he scoops it up. And that's going to be a first down, but they're going to have to get lined up and they're going to have to get it moving as they have limited time here and only two timeouts. Still a little bit under 60 yards to go here. Just ticking under four minutes to play. Down by two scores, Austria from their 41-yard line. Philip Hahn in motion. And he's going to run the wheel, stop, route. Tori over the middle, behind Ooh. him. What are they going to call it? I think the ball hit the ground I there. I thought so but too, but you never know what the refs are going to call. And Neither, this, there wasn't a ref that looked like he had a perfect angle on it. The two refs deliberating were the refs behind the play. 
<laughs> but that ball definitely, definitely hit the, the ground. ground. But again, the refs don't have that replay. All they have is what they saw, and they're they're gonna make the right call. That's a good call right there. That's a good call. And you definitely don't want to throw that ball late and behind. Again, as you said about these tips, when the ball goes up like that as a quarterback, you just... hold your breath. <laughs> You're holding your breath. Look like Third was getting ready to do a pursuit drill to make the save and tackle on that one, but it's not gonna count as an interception today. France playing two man. Going deep. Ooh. And that will be broken up nicely on the play. Oh, and there's and a, a flag. flag. And you know, I really hate these flags like this. I mean, I if this is a pass interference, I, I don't like it. I mean, I think that it's good defense. That's great defense. You can't ask much more from your DB for that one. And I really don't think that ball was catchable as he was he was clearly underneath them and the ball was behind. And they're going to get a gift here. They're going to get a pass interference call. And again, I think that was just great coverage. Yeah. We've seen a few questionable calls, but the one thing we have to remember that these aren't professional referees. They're not from the NFL or anything like that. So we have to have a little bit of a leeway, all right? They've not always got the best angles, no instant replay to go back and see. So not always going to have perfect calls. The players have to play through whatever's called on the field. Doherty, play action pass. And he's going to go deep down the left sideline, and that's going to be incomplete. Intended for his receiver, Fabian Alfalta. And so now it seems that Team France is challenging Team Austria, and they're playing man coverage. They're saying, hey, we got the talent to cover you guys, and they're going at it here. I love the technique, though. It's two men, and the guys underneath are letting themselves get beat a little bit because they know that they have safety help over the top. So it's what we call a trail technique in cover two. Ooh. That one just a little bit too high. That's where you can get in trouble in cover two is because your safeties are widening out to cover the sidelines so that middle of the field becomes a little bit vulnerable. Tori just not able to connect with his receiver down the seam. And he was going to have to... By the way that that looked, the receiver looked like he should have probably took it more upfield as it was wide open. Yeah. Adrian Plotzkumer, the one intent, the pass was intended for, and that one brings up third and ten. And at some point, you, you have to start thinking about getting another first down and not just taking these deep shots every single play. Tori back to pass. Pressure gets rid of it. And this one's going to be intercepted. And that's going to be Sebastian Sejan on the interception. And that's going to about wrap this one up. And that's going to be number 24 for France, the playmaker, Sebastian Sejan. And I mean, he's been having a good a good series, and that's probably going to seal the deal. And I think that's Sturry's first interception of the entire tournament, and it comes at a very critical time where really just wanted to make a play, and there was no play there. Yeah, yeah can't can't follow him too much. You're down by 14, not much time left. You got to force it in and towards the end of the game. France and they're just gonna run the clock out at this point. And if you're and if you're team France, you have to be satisfied. I mean these guys worked hard. I know that some of these guys were banged up, but they pushed through it versus a very tough Austrian team. And they probably came out here today and earned a championship. Exactly. And just watching this game and just thinking back, this this lets you know how competitive Team Finland was and what a good warm-up game to this championship that they were for Team France because they've come out here and dominated the second half and going to walk away with a 14-point win possibly. Yeah. 
Inside run once again, not going to get very far. Austria really selling out now. Clock ticking down close to the two minute mark. And they're going to try to let that clock run down to about a minute and 30 seconds and get a good punt. They can pin their ears back on defense even if they don't. It's going to be hard to come back from a 14-point deficit, two timeouts. And, and Austria, Austria choosing to let the clock run here and try to save those timeouts for offense. He's going to drive back to pass. Throws it deep on the corner run. And that one's picked off. Picked off at the 37-yard line. And that is number 29, Andreas Lunzer. And I don't know about that. And I tell you, I don't like that at all. I mean, he had 81 Jefferson on the curl route. And I think he just got greedy himself. I mean, that was an underthrown ball. And that was very crucial. And if I'm really, I would have just ran the ball. Keep the clock running. Force Austria to at least use one timeout. Run it away. Instead, Austria keeps those timeouts. There's only a minute 35 left. Still not a lot of time. But Brandon, hey, we've seen this before from Team France. We've seen it. We've seen it. I Question, mean, questionable I time management by, by France for sure. Tori back to pass. Throwing it deep. And that's going to be incomplete. It's looking for this guy, Soikovic. And Tori is slow to get up after taking a hit. Yeah, he definitely took a shot there by the linebacker coming free. And uh, this defense that's been being played today by Team France at number 30, Soleimane Kermanko, he's been tremendous against that, that tower of a receiver over there for Team Austria. And he's limited him a lot in the second half. I don't think he has a catch in the second half beyond the slant. Yeah, just the one slant. Again. Coming back again, going to Sykovitz and just outside of the reach. And that'll bring up third down and 10, a minute 24 remaining. And that's good coverage. Again, he's making the quarterback force. All of these balls have to be perfect high into the outside. If he throws anything underneath or anything short, it's going to be deflected or intercepted. Yep. Down in 10, Austria hoping for a prayer. France trying to take that away. Philip Juan in motion. Thori back to pass. Going on the wheel route, just down the outstretched hands. Bonatti Tobias. And that was a good ball, wide open, but nice throw. You got to catch that. Especially in crunch time like this. And this is going to be the ball game here. If they don't get it, I'm quite sure that Team France is going to run the clock out and get out of here with the gold medal. Or they can try to rub some salt in there. Fourth down and ten. Uri back to pass, clean pocket, over the middle, just behind Lotz Goomer, and that's going to do it. And they tried to go back to that play that they ran before, and again behind, and that time he was open, had his guy, uh, was that song, Adrian, running across the middle open, just misfires. And that's probably going to do it here today as the coaches and fans of Team France are starting to make their way to the field. And I'm sure it's going to be a big time celebration here for Team France as they've come out to Vonta, Finland and what's been a grind of a tournament playing three games within a week. Coming back from behind and they're going to be your 2018 European champions. And that's coming after a year where last year they won the world champions. And this is this is just the rise of Team France. As they're starting to get some notice that they're becoming a powerhouse and they're playing some good football over there. And the players are down here getting, getting that water ready to ice the coach. Wonder if he's expecting it. Of course he's expecting it. Oh wow, how 
clutch to Jefferson come in this fourth quarter, second half of football. Very quiet, at least we thought, but coaches did a good job involving him in the game and using him to close this thing out in the fourth quarter. And Team Monster did play some good football in this tournament this year. Going to be their first loss in the championship here. And they're just going to hand it off here to the big man and they're going to work the clock. So of course, will take their second timeout, but even after the third and final timeout, France will be able to run the clock down to about 20 seconds before they have to punt it away. And even if Austria gets the ball back with 20 seconds left, you can't score in 20 seconds, kick an onside kick, and then score again. Absolutely. So this one, inevitably, the outcome has already been determined. It says on the on the monitor two timeouts remaining, but I'm almost positive that was the third and final. And with a minute left, they can run a play, run it all the way down, and this is probably this is it. This game is over. And what a what a job by Team France to rally and just to play a perfect second half of football. I mean, defense didn't give up anything. Offense went down to put the game away. And I mean, Brandon, who do you think is going to get the MVP of this game? That's tough. That's tough because there, was, there wasn't one player for France who just completely took the game over. It was... Their quarterback making plays when he needed to. Alexandra making plays when he needed to. Yep, Mo when he needed to. The backup running back, Jason, when he was called on. So there wasn't one player that was just so dominated. It was, a, it was multiple players just all doing their job. I mean, I think you got to give it to this offensive line if you could. I mean, because they made everything possible for Team France to be able to do what they did today. Running the ball well, throwing the ball well. And they're going to run this one down. They're going to use all the clock here before they punt it. So they'll be able to get it down to close to 12 seconds before they need to punt it. So with 12 seconds left, it's it's literally impossible. This game is over. <laughs> And I mean, if you're Team Austria, you still have to be proud of the job that these men did. I mean, they came out here, played some good football, and I mean, that's what we expected from Team Austria. Today, France was the better team. They were more prepared for this game, and they just bonded together. Like I said earlier, I felt like Team France was very hungry, and they just had so much motivation because even in this game, I don't think that people really believed they were going to win. They knew that they would be talented and they would have a chance, but to come out and win in commanding fashion as they did, I don't think anyone expected that. I'll be the first to say I thought the game was going to go how the first half went. Even before the game, I thought Austria would do exactly what they did in the first half. The thing I didn't take into account was the fact that France, their halftime,
halftime adjustments were absolutely perfect. And after that, Austria's coaching staff, they had a great initial game plan, but they had no answer for what France brought to the table in the second half. And sometimes you can't always just make adjustments in the, in the locker room at halftime. You have to make adjustments on the fly, on the field in the second half. And Austria didn't do it, France did. Seven, only seven seconds left, and let me tell you, it takes more than seven seconds to run 70 yards. Definitely, most definitely. And on behalf of Jabari Harris and myself, we thank you for joining us for this broadcast. Stay tuned for the MVP awards and also the end game highlights. Thank you for watching the 2018 European Championships. Thank you and good night.
Thank <laughs> you. 